Hover tanks seem to be the go-to concept whenever a sci-fi tank needs to look advanced, and that makes sense. If you're trying to make something look futuristic or unknowable, making it float almost magically is a no-brainer. But the real question is, will hover tanks ever become a practical military vehicle? The answer is yes, and we already have them. Okay, but seriously, the answer is a little complex, so strap yourselves in, it's gonna be a bit of a ride. The supposed benefits of a hover tank are much higher top speed, more freedom of movement, immunity to landmines, and the ability to move over any terrain, water included. Hover tanks would have a much higher top speed, but at the cost of acceleration. A hover tank would be fighting just to keep itself airborne, let alone using some of that thrust for forward motion or braking. The tank would only be able to divert a small amount of thrust for directional control. This is assuming that the hover tank is using either fans or some kind of jet slash rocket to keep itself in the air. Anti-gravity hover tanks are so far-fetched that it would be pointless to speculate on them. Hover tanks would have the ability to strafe, but I see this as being very situational. Strafing would do practically nothing in combat. Tanks have no trouble tracking a target moving to the side at full speed, and the hover tank would take an incredibly long time to switch directions. The only situation in which I can see strafing being an advantage is if you wanted to park the hover tank in a very tight spot. Being immune to landmines would be a legitimate benefit if the tank was like our current hovercraft, i.e. extremely light. But if you wanted a hover tank that had armor and weighed something like 50 tons, then there starts to be a problem. The amount of downforce exerted over such a small area would likely set off the mine, sending shrapnel into whatever is keeping your tank in the air. Now, about traversing terrain. Hover tanks would perform very well in fields, over water, and in deserts. But if you start adding drastic elevation changes or obstacles, all of that goes out the window. Drastic dips in elevation could leave the hover tank smacking into the ground, damaging the propulsion equipment. Climbing large hills would also be a problem due to the aforementioned issues with spare thrust, and hover tanks would either find it very difficult or impossible to stay in a static position on a slope. Now, keep in mind, those points we just talked about were the positives. We're just now getting into the negatives. First, constructing a hovering main battle tank would require a stupid amount of power. If you want to make an Abrams hover, you'd need the combined power of over four F-22 engines. Imagine how much fuel that would burn, and how little space there is in a tank. You'd get maybe a minute of flight time before you run out of fuel, and that's a very generous estimate. So that precludes the possibility of a hovering main battle tank. What about a light tank or a tank destroyer? Well, it doesn't get much better. The tank would still need to be fairly large, since the components necessary to make something hover take up a ton of space making it an appealing target. To keep the weight down, the tank would likely only be able to stop rifles and shrapnel. The propulsion systems will be vulnerable to any kind of weapon. Firing artillery with impact fuses so that the shrapnel splashes up from the ground into the propulsion systems would be a very effective way of taking out a hover tank. Hover tanks would also have trouble counteracting recoil from conventional tank cannons, leaving them only with recoilless rifles, small autocannons, and missiles as options for their main weapon. This obviously limits the number of roles that they can effectively fulfill. Going back to the hover tank speed for a bit, that could actually work against them in some cases. A tank smacking into something at 70 km an hour is bad enough. Now imagine that same scenario at 130 km an hour. Now remember that tanks don't have seat belts. Hover tanks would be even more likely to smack into things due to how fast they move and how long it would take to change direction. And if your propulsion system suffers a failure or is disabled by enemy fire, you're now careening into the ground at incredible speed. On the plus side, your tank is now a tumbling missile if it's close to the enemy. On the downside, you are inside of it, and likely getting turned to jelly on all the rough edges. Even the partial failure would lead to utter disaster. So basically, hover tanks would be limited to very light tanks that can only fire light autocannons and missiles, while being relegated to reconnaissance, anti-tank, and light fire support roles. Wait, that sounds pretty familiar. I wonder where I've heard that before. Sorry for doing the same gag twice, but it just fits too well. There's really only one type of feasible hover tank, and they're just the worst version of helicopters. If you put a new form of propulsion on a tank, then it kind of stops being a tank. That's about all I can think to say on the subject of hover tanks. Remember, I'm not saying that science fiction universes shouldn't use them. I don't want to ruin everybody's party. We're just not likely to use them in reality. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video.